السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته هاي everyone I'm أحلام العمري from the general directorate of infection prevention and control and today I will give you a session about the infection prevention and control program and particularly in the long term uh, care and uh, medical rehabilitation services so let's start together The outlines of this session will be uh, providing you a brief introduction about the topic and explore the importance and significance of infection prevention and control program. Also, uh, to explain the concept of the infection prevention and control program and all its related aspects. In the beginning, we need to know um, the abbreviation of iClear. iClear is a project that launched um, by the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control at Ministry of Health in collaboration with the General Administration of the uh, long-term and medical rehabilitation facilities in order to um, improve and enhance the infection prevention and control measures in these services. And the abbreviation of iClear stands uh, for infection control and in long-term and medical rehabilitation enhancement. And actually this name is derived from the Latin language that means bright. So we are hoping that the infection prevention and control programs will be bright in these facilities in the future. So initially, we need to explore and explain some uh, most common terms that we will face it when we are looking in the reference for the infection prevention and control program. The infection prevention is um, someone who is qualified through education, training, experience, or certification in the infection prevention and control field. Uh, the infection prevention and control program, which is related to the policy and procedure put in place to minimize or reduce healthcare associated infections in the hospitals and other healthcare settings. Infection Prevention Committee functions as a central decision-making and policy-making body for the infection prevention in the healthcare setting. The infection prevention and control programs have changed significantly since the mid of 20th century. And this changes occur as a result of different influences and factors, such as professional and organization, government, regulatory and accrediting agencies, and scientific research and publication, which lead to improve the infection prevention and control program. As well as the other influences include increasing the acuity of patients, the aging population, the complexity and location of treatment intervention, and the increasing move toward care in home and ambulatory settings. All these factors and influences that lead to, uh, to have and, and intensify the need for uh, constructing infection prevention and control in the healthcare sectors at international and, and national level. The increasing demand for the healthcare acquired infection control practices and services has intensified also the need to evaluate care quality. The World Health Organization introduced an infection prevention and control framework to mitigate the impact of HEIs crucial for ensuring patient safety in healthcare facilities. The question here, why do we need to have an infection prevention and control program in our healthcare facilities? By implementing a comprehensive infection prevention and control program, rehabilitation and long-term care services can effectively reduce the incidence of healthcare acquired infections. Also to protect our patients as well as to protect our healthcare workers and promote overall care, quality of care that provided. The optimum success of the IBC program depends on having both a highly trained infection prevention and control practitioner and access to the essential infection prevention and control resources. This um, study actually showing the significance and importance of infection prevention and control in the long-term care facilities. This study was um, uh, actually uh, conducted from 2011 to 2016. Uh, it was observational cohort studies that um, measuring the, uh, the implemented infection prevention and control program in the neuro ICU and uh, between this period to, ensure, to check and evaluate the impact of these measures in the reduction of the incidence of healthcare acquired infections and the antibiotic resistant organism. And actually the conclusion of the study was showing that by implementing and the effective and evidence-based IBC program in this uh, type of services was highly effective in reducing the HAIs rate and with meaningful reduction in the antibiotic resistant organism. 
So after the a brief introduction in the previous slide, so uh, we have now a clear picture about the, the meaning uh, of the infection prevention and control program. The IBC program is described as a written plan based on both facility and infection prevention uh, risk assessment. Developing an infection prevention and control program should be based on the scope of service because each healthcare facility is unique. They have their own characteristics that are different than other healthcare facilities. And the IBC program must be based on the current scientific knowledge, reference practices, guidelines, and applicable national laws and regulation. And also, this program must be based on the healthcare facility risk assessment, which is really different than the ECRA, and because usually the healthcare workers, and particularly the infection prevention and control practitioner, they are uh, misleading the, the difference between the infection control risk assessment and the ECRA. ECRA, the infection control risk assessment, in the activities related to the construction and renovation, while the infection prevention and control uh, risk assessment that we are talking about here in this slide, that uh, means the, the main uh, tool that used to identify the high risk factors and high risk areas that we need to consider when we are um, constructing an infection prevention and control plan and program. In all healthcare facilities, uh, infection prevention and control programs, they have a specific uh, common goals. The goal of this program is to protect the patient, protect the healthcare workers, visitors, and other in the healthcare environment, as well as it must be cost effectively accomplished the previous two goals whenever possible. Each healthcare facility is different than other, and each healthcare facility uh, unique, and they have a specific needs and characteristics different than other. And when we are developing or reorganizing the infection prevention and control, we have to consider all these factors and characteristics. And the factors include the size and the case mix and type of care provided. And the principal functions are generally similar, however, and include the following. It's need to obtain and manage critical data and information, including surveillance for infections, to develop and recommend policy and procedure, to intervene directly to prevent the infections and interrupt the transmission of infectious disease, to educate and train healthcare workers, patients, and non-medical caregivers. And we cannot give this lecture without giving um, a spotting light on the infection prevention and control in Saudi Arabia. For many years, only few hospitals had infection prevention and control program. And the general type trait of infection prevention and control was established in 2008. And the infection control diploma was started in 2012. And the first hospital outbreak of MERS was in 2014. And it was the turning point in the history of infection control in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And nowadays, alhamdulillah, all hospitals across the kingdom have a functioning and will establish infection prevention and control program that carried out by a professional and well competent infection prevention and control practitioners. Infection control risk assessment is the main component in the infection prevention and control program in any healthcare facilities. And here we have to differentiate between the infection control risk assessment and ECRA. The ECRA or infection control risk assessment is only for the construction and renovation activities, while the infection control risk assessment must be implemented annually for any healthcare facilities and based in the high or the uh, moderate or low risk factors uh, we have or aspect we have to implement or construct our annual plan in infection control. So the infection control risk assessment is um, performed through the interdisciplinary team to determine goals and objectives for IBC program by performing an annual risk assessment. Identification uh, uh, of the high volume, high risk and problem prone activities is an important component of the risk assessment. Even the IBC resources and data system needs should be evaluated in the context of these goals and objectives. The risk assessment can assist in the setting priorities, as we mentioned earlier, and obtaining support from the key stakeholders through this uh, by setting uh, priorities to help focus on the appropriate allocation of the IBC program resources. Another aspect or component in the infection prevention and control program in any healthcare facilities is the infection prevention and control committee. So the infection prevention and control committee functions as a central decision 
and policy making body for infection prevention and control and strengthening the performance management of healthcare associated infection. It provides assurance to the healthcare institute that results in improving patient outcomes through making recommendations on IBC matters and assess and identify risk within the infection prevention and control portfolio and escalate it as appropriate when we need it. The infection prevention and control program is, uh, it must be, uh, and is already stated as a standard in different accreditation agencies, such as the Joint Commission International, the SIBAHI, as well as in ICA. All these uh, accreditation uh, bodies, they required uh, in each healthcare facilities that they must have a well-constructed and functioning infection prevention and control program. Infection prevention and control policy and procedure is um, a crucial component in the infection prevention and control program. Evidence-based infection prevention and control policy and procedure should be developed and implemented to prevent the healthcare associated infections. All policy and procedure for infection prevention and control should be developed by the IBC department and must be approved by the IBC committee. So all the policy and procedure that constructed must be discussed uh, thoroughly in the uh, infection control uh, committee in order to uh, all the members in the committee must be aware and approved for that policy and procedure. Policy and procedure are based on the approved MOH or national guidelines and scientific references such as GCC, CDC, WHO or EPIC. And the education and training of healthcare workers on the guidelines and the monitoring of adherence to the guidelines and policy and procedure recommendation should be undertaken to achieve a successful implementation of the infection prevention and control program. Also, when we are considering or talking or discussing about the infection prevention and control program, we have to uh, put the light or spot the light on the infection prevention and control team. Often the core of infection prevention and control program is the infection preventionist, share of the infection prevention committee, and the healthcare epidemiologist. An individual responsible for occupational health or administration also must be a part of this team. The team is responsible for carrying out all aspects of IBC program, and authority to carry out these activities is designated uh, by the facility leadership. There should be one person, however, uh, must be assigned as a director or head of the infection prevention and control department in order to ensure the effective implementation of the infection prevention and control program. Infection prevention and control professionals, they are also crucial core of the infection prevention and control program because the infection preventionists has a background in nursing, microbiology, public health, or medical technology in order to understand and be uh, competent in all uh, required competency or all required skills that require to be as an infection prevention and control professional. Additional titles used by the infection preventionist may include the infection control nurse, infection control coordinator, nurse epidemiologist, infection control officer, as well as infection control practitioner. The infection preventionist typically functions as a consultant, educator, role model, researcher, and change agent. They are not working only for monitoring the infection control program. They have to have a specific soft skills that in order to um, influence on the healthcare workers to comply with all uh, policy and procedure and uh, trusted on the infection prevention and control program in order to reduce and prevent the healthcare acquired infections. The infection prevention and control responsibilities include education, consultation, surveillance, implementation science, patient safety and quality improvement. Recently, responsibility for the infection preventionists have expanded and required the ability to evolve and grow with ever-changing skill set. Hiring professionals with a diverse background may provide a more robust program by providing a new insight into the prevention efforts. It's supposed to be there is a specific IBC core competency activities required among the infection prevention and control team such as identification of infectious disease process, surveillance and epidemiologic investigation, preventing and controlling the transmission of infectious agents, the occupation and health, the management and communication, education and research, environment of care, cleaning, sterilization, disinfection and sepsis, 
healthcare acquired infection outbreak management all these core competencies is must be um, uh, available and the, all the infection prevention and control professionals have a competent on it staffing staffing is a main also component in the infection prevention and control so the issue of appropriate staffing level to conduct infection prevention activities has become a common concern among the infection preventionists and hospital leadership. It noted that staffing recommendation must consider the number of occupied beds, the scope of service, the complexity of healthcare facility, the population served, characteristic of patient population and unique needs of the facility. So each healthcare facility have their required staffing number in the infection prevention and control program based on the scope of service and the bed capacity as well as the population the characteristic of population served in that community. Another main component of infection prevention and control is leadership and governance. So creating a culture where everyone is empowered to speak up and be receptive to feedback about the infection prevention and control behavior has a positive impact on safety. Healthcare facility with a strong visible leadership and exemplary role modeling from managers and team leaders usually achieve an excellence in the infection prevention and control program. At national healthcare sector level, registered persons have a legal obligations in relation to the prevention and control of infection. Nowadays, we have a different channels for providing accessibility to the infection prevention and control resources at national level in order to promote the infection prevention and control practices. So uh, by promoting the infection prevention and control, uh, the effective uh, in supporting high standards in IBC. Several resources are nowadays available at national level in order to support promotion of health and prevention of healthcare acquired infections. We cannot give uh, an effective or implement an effective infection prevention and control program unless we have uh, an effective training and education aspects or measures are taking place there in the healthcare facilities. So training and education is essential to protect healthcare workers and patients and visitors as well as all who encounter the healthcare uh, services from the risk of infection, along with maintaining competence in applying the principles of infection prevention and control. Each care service should have a policy which set out the training required and the frequency along with how ongoing competency will be assured. It's really important as infection prevention and control department in your program, in the infection control program, you have to have an educational plan that focusing in a different categories, such as the healthcare workers, the patient visitors and their relatives, as well as the other healthcare workers, such as the trainees, students and interns, uh, as well as you have to have a main aspect of training and education in your annual plan or your educational plan for the infection prevention and control practitioners, because they must receive a competency and receive uh, a specific uh, training and education different than the other healthcare workers in the healthcare facility. This systematic review is showing the effectiveness and core com uh, components of infection prevention and control programs in the long-term care facility. And the systematic review conclusion is that there is some evidence for the effectiveness of infection prevention and control intervention by using education, monitoring, feedback, and four or more elements of the WHO multimodal strategies in, in reducing the healthcare associated infection in this uh, type of facility. So in conclusion, the long-term and medical rehabilitation services must comply with the national standards that play a major role in defining the infection prevention and control program. Infection preventionists in these services should be knowledgeable about the compliance issues, have a basic understanding of the core infection prevention and control measures, and be familiar with the infection prevention issues specific to their population. And this is the reference for today's uh, session. And if you have any question, kindly do not hesitate to contact us at any time. And you can scan this barcode to find out the guidelines related to the infection prevention and control in long-term and medical rehabilitation services. And through uh, applying or implementing these measures will create a healthy and safe environment for our patients. Thank you for listening to this lecture, which is a one of multiple educational materials of iClare projects. 
and remember that success is the sum of all efforts repeated day in and day out and kindly if you have any question do not hesitate to contact us through the email gdibc at moh.gov.sa as well as you can find a various materials related to the infection prevention and control program and resources in the website of ibckse.com.